Welcome to the iGET Concept Module on Infrared Radiation. This is a Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. And this is the James Webb Space Telescope, which will be launched in 2018 and look out toward the edge of the universe. What do this snake and a space telescope have in common? They both detect infrared radiation. Visible light is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which includes radiation of many wavelengths. The waves with shorter wavelengths have higher frequencies. In other words, more of them pass in a given amount of time than waves with longer wavelengths. Higher frequencies mean more energy. The wavelength of visible light ranges from violet at 0.4 microns to red at 0.7 microns. Infra means below, so infrared means below red. Infrared radiation has longer wavelengths and lower frequencies than visible light. It starts where red light ends. The wavelength of infrared radiation ranges from 0.7 microns to 1 millimeter, 1,000 microns. This large span of wavelengths is usually chopped into smaller pieces, near, shortwave, mid, thermal, and far infrared. A study by dermatologists showed that the depth of penetration by infrared radiation in the skin decreases with longer wavelength. 1 micron and 1.4 micron infrared made it easily through the skin to the layers below without heating the skin. 3 to 6 micron infrared was completely absorbed by the outer skin and significantly raised its temperature. We sense longer wave infrared as heat. The western diamondback rattlesnake can detect the infrared given off by warm-blooded prey such as rodents. It is one of a group of snakes called pit vipers. Pit vipers have infrared sensing organs and pits on their heads. The pit organs send an infrared image to the snake's brain where it is combined with the visible light image from the snake's eyes. This enhances the snake's ability to find prey. Seeing infrared helps snakes survive. It also helps humans learn about the Earth and the universe. This molten iron is glowing. It is hot enough to give off visible light as well as heat. After it cools enough to stop glowing, it will continue to emit infrared radiation, heat, as it continues to cool. Similarly, objects in space that are too cool to emit visible light may emit infrared and can be seen with infrared detectors. This dust cloud is warmed by starlight and emits infrared. It cannot be seen with visible light. Longer wavelength radiation is less likely to be absorbed by dust particles than shorter wave radiation. The infrared from stars or other objects in dust clouds can be seen even when the dust absorbs their visible radiation. These pictures show the Carina Nebula in visible light at the top and in infrared at the bottom. Young stars producing jets of hot material are mostly hidden by dust in the upper view and are visible in the lower one. Much of the infrared from space and the sun is absorbed in the Earth's atmosphere, so infrared telescopes work best at high altitudes or on satellites. The infrared and visible light telescopes on Mauna Kea, Hawaii, are at nearly 14,000 feet above sea level. Satellites that look down at the Earth rather than away from it can also see infrared. Many NASA satellites have infrared detectors, including Landsat 8. Landsat 8 detects short intervals of visible and infrared wavelengths called bands. Some materials absorb solar infrared more strongly than others, and some emit or reflect it more strongly than others. Landsat can detect these variations in infrared absorption, emission, or reflection. Landsat 8 detects four near-infrared bands. Band 5, 0.85 to 0.88 microns. Band 6, 1.57 to 1.65 microns. Band 7, 2.11 to 2.29 microns, and band 9, 1.36 to 1.38 microns. Landsat 8 also detects two thermal infrared bands, band 10, 
10.6 to 11.9 microns, and band 11, 11.5 to 12.51 microns. Solar radiation of various wavelengths is absorbed by materials at the Earth's surface and re-emitted as infrared. The stone walls of this building absorb sunlight during the day and re-emit it as thermal infrared through the day and into the night. Thermal infrared can also be emitted by other heat sources, such as volcanoes. Therm emitted thermal infrared can be used to observe volcanoes and forest fires. It is also used to monitor crops since growing plants cool the air above them by releasing water vapor and cooler air emits less infrared. Infrared is also used for geological mapping and mineral prospecting. Different rock types absorb, re-emit, and reflect infrared differently. Water-saturated porous rocks absorb more infrared than dry rocks. The surface of a leaf absorbs blue and red visible light, but reflects green light. This is why vegetation usually appears green to us. Leaves also reflect near-infrared radiation. The healthier the vegetation, the stronger the reflection of infrared. Infrared and visible light data can be combined to produce images. In this mixed infrared visible image of Washington, D.C., vegetation is red, buildings are blue, and water is nearly black. The healthiest vegetation is the brightest red. One of the most important applications of infrared satellite data is determining the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, NDVI. It is a measure of how dense, and in many cases, how healthy vegetation is. The NDVI is calculated using reflectance data, how strongly light is reflected from vegetation, for visible red light and near-infrared light. NDVI is equal to NIR minus VIS, divided by NIR plus VIS, where NIR is the reflectance of near-infrared light and VIS is the reflectance of visible light. The value of the NDVI varies from minus one to plus one. Healthy vegetation gives values of 0.3 to 0.8. Vegetation affected by drought, blight, or pests gives lower values. This map of the Great Plains shows the ratio of NDVI values for the period from July 28, 2006 to August 12, 2006 to average values from 2001 to 2005. A negative value, brown to red, indicates that the area is suffering from drought. A positive value, green, shows healthier vegetation than normal. Infrared radiation helps us keep track of how droughts and global warming change patterns of vegetation growth and distribution. New, new uses for Landsat infrared data are being developed all the time. Infrared remote sensing is a large and promising area of planetary and astronomical research. We can now see the infrared world and the infrared universe.